Hey friends, it's Unicorn, and today I want to bring you the wrap up of all the readings I did and also the one documentary I watched for the month of Lebanon for From and About Asia Reading Project. All the information about this project and a bunch of other things will be all linked down below, including the resource page, the first video I made for Lebanon, where I talked about all the interesting books I found during my research, and the individual reviews for every book I'm gonna mention in this video. This video will have two parts. The first one will be the reviews for all the books I read and the one documentary I watched. The second part is where I'm going to talk about what I learned about Lebanon and most importantly the things that can get rid of my mind after I learned about it. And now without further ado, let's talk about the books. For category 1, read books by Lebanese authors. I read 3 books in total including one short story collection and two graphic memoirs. The short story collection I read is Jokes for the Gunman by Menzi Marouf, translated by Jonathan Wright. This is a set of captivating short stories set in the Lebanese Civil War. The strongest feeling I got after reading this book is disorientation. With jokes on the book title, which is also the title for the first story, this is by no means a light-hearted book, and I cannot imagine people laugh out loud when reading it. Instead, we often get this kind of twisting and shattered point of view from our protagonists. And Many of the protagonists are children, so for us to see them trying to make sense of the war is a very interesting experience. Because little children are often not able to process the reality, so their interpretation of the war can be very different from us, like seeing the wartime from an adult point of view. And we are reading about them trying to turn lives into jokes, which is not funny at all, as both sad and bizarre. Another theme of this book is the sense of love. Uh, because the stories are set in wartime, so every character has lost something, whether it is part of their property, their part of their body, or their dignity. Loss runs through every story, and we can tell that it's all because of the loss of normal order during wartime. I quite like the collection that has some like common themes running through different stories. I think it can give the book a very coherent feeling, and this book delivered just like that. The first story in the book, Jokes for the Gunman, is a very very strong story and set the base tone of the whole book. It's one of the stories that told from a child's perspective, and his ideas of his life is both fascinating as well as fractured. The story was chilly and bizarre and a very strong opening. However, by the nature of a short story collection, not all the stories are as strong as jokes for the gunman. Some stories I found I didn't really care that much and I found they're a bit too long, although a lot of the stories are just about 10 pages each. But overall, I enjoyed more stories in the book than the ones that I didn't like, so I gave this book a 3.5 stars and I think it provided a very unique view of the war. Then I read two graphic memoirs, both by Dina Abraj and translated by Edward Gavai. The first one is a game for swallows, and the second one is called I Remember Beirut. You know, I was born six years into the Lebanese civil war, and uh, the war became a norm in her childhood memory. The city of Beirut was divided into two parts, the East Christian side and the West Muslim side, and it's extremely dangerous for people to cross sides. Family's lifestyle it was designed by the war, and they planned everything accordingly. A game for swallows is talking about one day Zina's parents were Went to the other side of the city and they didn't make it back in time. So Zina and her brother needed to go by this dramatic day with the help of their neighbors. So initially I thought this book will be about Zina's family and how they lived life during the war, but in fact this book is more like the background stories of each neighbors and how they get by during the war and why they ended up living in the same building. I found the stories of each character very interesting and you got the sense of idea that how people thought during the war. You see some people are making plans to leave the country and some people had the confidence that the war won't last long. They also illustrated about how people go by and provided for themselves during the war with very simple black and white illustration. The book actually delivers a lot of information and I liked how it actually shows what Beirut looks like to me and developed this very vivid picture in my mind of how people lived back in the days. So I quite enjoyed it. And I remember Beirut, on the other hand, is a unexpected emotional bump for me with even shorter page. 
It's more like a slice of life kind of illustrated book with the important piece of memories in the author's childhood. But this book covers a longer time, even talks about the things that happened after the Civil War ends, and with a little section in the end about her adult life. A lot of the characters featured in A Game for Swallows are also in this book, but with a very much simpler introduction. But I don't think you need to read that book in order to enjoy this one, just like treat them as neighbors that showed up in her memories. But having some more information will make the reading experience more fun for sure. The book has only 98 pages and I was in tears after reading it. I think it's all about the timing when I read it. I haven't been home for two years and it's around Chinese New Year and I just miss my parents so bad so the nostalgia that the book brought me is just unbearable. I also loved, loved how in the end Zina played around with the shapes and the meanings of some Arabic words. Although I don't know the meanings of them exactly, but I think I understood from the context. And I think it's so beautifully designed and it's such a brilliant ending of this memoir. So I highly, highly recommend these two memoirs if you want to learn more about Lebanese people's life during the civil war, especially they're both very short and won't take a lot of time Time to read. Then for category 2, read the book about the culture of the sub-region of the country as you chose to read about Lebanon. And I read this book, Lebanon, A Country in Fragments by Andrew Arson. And I'm so proud to say that I have finished this chunky book. I really enjoyed the reading process of it. And also I feel like I learned so much from it. When I was doing research for Lebanon, I keep seeing all the books that talks about the Lebanese civil war or histories even before that. I kept wondering that what are the lives like after the Lebanese civil war? And uh, I'm so glad that I found this book because it talks about the most recent histories of of Lebanon and I wouldn't say that it answered all of my questions but it provided a good enough overview for Lebanon in the most 15 years after the assassination of its prime minister in 2005. This book has two parts. The first part is called The Time of Politics. It talks about the politic dynamic of Lebanon in the most recent 15 years, how the assassination of its prime minister in 2005 was just a prologue of a series of different assassinations and power plays. This part also tackles on the relationship between Lebanon and other countries, especially the neighboring countries Syria and Israel because Lebanon is located in between those two. I think it demonstrated the impact of the neighboring countries very well in this book and also showed us the influence and the consequences of the different conditions in those neighboring countries. There are many many parties and religions come to the play. Although I did need some quick googling for me to understand the terms, I think this book also explains the different stands and beliefs and the different holes of different organizations very well. Second part of the book is called The Time of Every Day, and focusing on talking about the livelihood of civilians. It covers topics like the economy, the huge gap between the rich and poor, the high rate of unemployment and refugees, and some other social conditions. One thing the author spent a whole chapter on is the trash crisis in Lebanon, which I found very interesting. So one day in 2015, Lebanon suddenly stopped to collecting trash from people so that caused the overflow of trash and the bad smells in the city of Beirut. This is all because of the government closed off one of the landfill for trashes and didn't point it out another alternative one. And this book studied the reasons behind it and also the actions after. I think this is a great showing of how fractures of a policy that Lebanon has. And I found this particularly interesting because trash is not the first thing that we think about when we're thinking about running a city or we're thinking about learning about a country. But it's actually so important and so close to home. It's something that we cannot afford to go wrong. However, compared to the first part of the book where I can piece together how politics works in Lebanon, the second part didn't really show me how people are connected and live together in Lebanon. The stories can jump from so many different angles. One page we can talk about how people are poor and cannot afford to provide themselves in Lebanon. And another page can jump to the stories of rich people and how they hire different maids 
in their house and also they go to the luxury restaurants where one meal can cost like 20% of average salary. And after that, the book can quickly jump to the story of refugees and how they don't have a roof on top of their head and uh, how they are discriminated in the society. I like how broad range of the livelihood that this book covered in the second section but it's very hard for me to imagine how they coexist in this society. I think some more information about the connections will be helpful or even a map will be helpful. It could also because of the society is just so divided, just as Beirut was divided in the civil war. Overall, I really enjoyed this book and I feel like it taught me so much about Lebanon in the recent years and I just am really happy that I read it. Then I want to talk about the the one documentary I watched on the topic of Lebanon is called A World Not Ours, directed by Mady Fleffel. Mady Fleffel's family is Palestinian refugees who lived in a refugee camp in southern Lebanon for over three generations. Him and his parents moved to Europe when he was small, but he visited Lebanon regularly and every visit he tried to film something and eventually they became this documentary. This is not something that tried to discuss the hardship of refugee lives. It's more like a love letter that the director had to the place that he grew up in. It just presents their day-to-day -day life to you, the happy moments people had, the not-so-happy ones, how people go by day by day, and how do they use the limited resource to provide for themselves, and what do they do after they found out that they do not have enough to go by. And because of the tenderness of the narration, this documentary can feel very close to us and make us really care about the people in it. One moment I remember in particular is a person tried to point out a place where a bombing took place before and he just told you about it in a such a casual way that you feel like the bombing is for them is as usual as dinners. I also like how it showed us the mindset changes among different generations, how the older generations are still hoping and still wishing to go back to live in their homelands, and how the younger generation has already changed in their mind and have different plans. I recommend this documentary to anyone who wants to learn more about how refugees lived in Lebanon, and also there are so many of them. They're increasing year by year because of the war of the neighboring countries. As heavy as the topic can be, the documentary itself is not so dense and it's very easy to digest. And now I want to talk about some memorable things that I learned during the one month of reading and watching. I'm sure my thoughts are still on the surface level because a month is not enough to learn about anything really. So these are just some of general thoughts of mine. Overall, one key word I got for Lebanon is division from before the end of Lebanese civil war when Beirut was divided into two parts to now that there's still so many types of conflicts that led by different groups of people and in the end of the day, it was the civilians who's paying the prices for the division and who's affording all the consequences. When I was searching for the pictures for Lebanon, I see so many stunning, beautiful natures and colorful cities. And this country has thousands of years of history. When I learned that once Lebanon was trying to build itself as a peaceful tourist country, the Switzerland in the Middle East, I just keep thinking that how it is a shame that it didn't accomplish this goal. Because indeed, this country has so many potential to attract different tourists from all over the world. But in the end, the investment of money and energy all went on the West because of the constant conflict the country had. And the other one I cannot stop thinking about is the trash crisis. From what I gathered, it grows year after year after 2015, and the old existing landfills are reached their capability and the new ones are still undecided. And this led to the problem that it's not only dangerous to the civilian's health, the Lebanese government also need to pay almost 10 times amount of cost on their trash compared to their neighboring countries. 
Furthermore, some places are stuck to dump trash into the ocean. It became a huge management and environmental disaster. But overall, the world is still as complicated as it can be. And I'm just glad that I spent one month reading about this historical country. And I hope you found this video interesting as well. Please let me know any of your thoughts regarding to Lebanon. Have you read anything about it? Or are you interested in anything I mentioned in this video? Don't forget to check out all the informations in the description box. And don't forget to say hi. What's up to this video? Video if you liked it. I wish you happy reading, stay healthy. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye!